you've finally gotten into medical school and there's just four short years between you and earning your MD. In this video, we'll go over the timeline and what to expect each year. What's going on guys? Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. The first year will be the most radical transition for most students. Gone are the days of college and now the rigors of medical school are thrust upon you. The first few weeks to months are challenging for this reason, but you'll soon get in the groove and soon learn that your first year offers you the most free time. I go over how to make the adjustment as painless as possible in my Adjusting to Med School 101 video, which goes into great depth with actionable advice. During this time, you should reassess and hone your study strategies, figure out your routines, and work to optimize your efficiency in preparation for the upcoming stages of medical school. Find your group of friends and figure out whether or not they are people that you can actually study with. Sometimes, studying with your closest friends is more distracting than motivating. You will remember the middle and the end of your first year as some of the best times in medical school. The stress is comparatively low to the later stages, you have more free time, and you are bonding with new people and solidifying lifelong friendships. You'll be amazed by your classmates, as medical students are some of the most impressive and diverse people you'll come across. The second year starts with an uneasy tension that will grow and expand for the rest of the year. That tension is for one thing and one thing only. Step one. Step one is the first of three United States medical licensing exams or USMLEs that you'll be taking prior to obtaining your medical license. Step one and step two are taken during medical school. Step one is considered the most important for matching into residency, hence the high stress building to a climax at the end of your second year. In the second year, you should have honed your study strategies, time management, and be ready to increase the intensity of your studying. In the first couple months, you may be solidifying your plan on how to study for USMLE step one. There are two stages, leading up to the dedicated period and the dedicated period. I go over how I achieved a top score in my USMLE Step 1 Dedicated Period Study video. Now Step 1 is a beast unlike any other test. For the MCAT, you can put in 2 months and achieve a 99th percentile score. But Step 1 is a different animal. It's the culmination of your entire first 2 years of medical school, and you'll spend most of your second year utilizing resources to adequately prepare you for it. Most students take Step 1 in the spring at the end of their second year. In the fall and winter of second year, you'll hermit up and spend more time studying and less time socializing. The end of winter or early on in spring is when you'll have your dedicated period where you don't have any classes and just focus entirely on studying. And right after you take step one, you'll begin your third year. Now, third year. Most students love it, but some students hate it. Regardless, it is an adjustment for everyone. Third year marks the beginning of your clinical years. While the first two years were focused in the classroom, the latter two years are primarily in the hospital or clinic. This is what you came to medical school for, to become a doctor and take care of patients. Clinical rotations are particularly challenging because for the first time in your life, you're not just studying out of books and taking tests. Rather, you do still need to do that, but now most of your waking hours are spent in the hospital or clinic and your evaluations from your seniors hold tremendous weight in your overall grade. It's a different game entirely. Every medical student has to take a series of core rotations before graduating. During your third year, you'll likely be rotating on internal medicine, family medicine, general surgery, psychiatry, neurology, pediatrics, ob and emergency medicine. At the end of your third year, you'll begin preparing for Step 2 CK. Step 2 is similar to Step 1, except now it's testing the culmination of knowledge from your third year of med school, most heavily concepts that are from your internal medicine rotation. You won't be studying nearly as hard as you did for Step 1. One month for Step 2 will usually suffice. Finally, the fourth year of med school. This is the promised land, right? Hold your horses. Everyone told me that fourth year was the dream and that everything would be smooth sailing, but not so fast. The first half of fourth year is arguably the hardest part of the entire medical training process, at least if you go into a competitive surgical subspecialty. The first half of your fourth year is challenging for two main reasons. 
sub-internships, and preparing your residency application. Sub-internships, also known as audition rotations, are rotations you perform at other institutions anywhere in the country. You're essentially performing a month-long interview, and you have to be on your best behavior. If you're going into a specialty with a suboptimal lifestyle, like surgery, expect long hours and high stress. You know how you applied to med school using AMCAS? Medical students apply to residency using ERAS, which stands for Electronic Residency Application Service. I know, very creative. The application usually opens around September 15th. It's a single common application, just like AMCAS, and you submit a personal statement, letters of recommendation, and a work and activity section. It's very similar to AMCAS, but thankfully you don't have any secondaries to complete. It's important to note here that sometime during your fourth year, you'll be taking step two CS, which is the clinical portion of your step two exam. It's quite easy to pass and doesn't require that much preparation, so it's not something that I'm going to emphasize here. Now the timing of interviews varies by specialty, occurring anywhere between October to February. At the end of February, you submit your rank list. You don't get accepted by programs in the traditional sense. Instead, both applicants and programs submit a rank list. An algorithm runs and a month later, around the middle of March, is match day. You open your envelope with the rest of your classmates during a grand ceremony and your fate is sealed. Inside that envelope is the program that you'll be training at for the next three to seven years. And after March, it's smooth sailing. Residency starts on July 1st. And between match and starting residency, most students take this opportunity to travel or spend time with loved ones because residency is gonna be a rough ride. And that is it. The four years of medical school are no joke. You'll be tested, you'll have your lows, but you may also remember medical school as some of the best years of your life. The bonds you make with your newfound friends, the amount of knowledge you gain, and the sense of accomplishment for completing the most rigorous professional degree in the world. If you are a pre-med, we've created a course just for you. It's the pre-med roadmap to medical school acceptance. We go in painstaking detail through each year of college and outline the most important items to focus on during each stage. It is an adaptable blueprint that will help maximize your chances of getting into a top medical school. We have several videos, written content, and exclusive access to a mentorship group where you can get your personal questions answered either by me or other doctors. The first 25 customers will get 25% off their purchase using the coupon code in the description below. Let me know down in the comments, what part of medical school are you looking forward to most? I personally loved anatomy during my first year, but fourth year was the highlight for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, mash that like button. You do not want to miss a video, so make sure you're subscribed and press that notification bell. And I will see you guys in that next one.